Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. It is another beautiful early February morning here in Southwest Florida. It is 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 22 degrees Celsius. Again, just a beautiful day. I wish I could say the birds were chirping in the morning. It's, it's, uh, it's about not even 9 a.m., so I got an early start on things. Um, you, you may hear the grackles squawking. There's <laughs> not really birds chirping right now, but the grackles are pretty busy and they're flying around as, as they tend to do here this time of the day. Um, what I want to do today is give you a little bit of a different, uh, different video. And I want to kind of show you my growing space. There's a lot of things going on. I'm excited about some of my orchids, but I also have some other things that I want to share with you. And I want to, I want to show you about some of the different plants that are in my garden and what's going on with them. So as an example, I got a tomato plant right back there. Early February, it's got some, it's got fruits coming out on it. This is what happens. Um, and I've got a lot of plants that are, that are growing and they're looking, looking good. Uh, in Southwest Florida, this is a this isn't the hot time of the year. This is a warm time of the year, so you get you can grow a lot of things here that uh, are maybe spring or early summer uh, growers in other in other parts of the United States. So uh, I'm going to share with you those things to give you a little bit of a break if you're dealing with winter or cooler temperatures. But I've got some uh, I've got a lot of interesting things going on here. So. Um, Got first blooms on, or, or bloom spikes coming on some of the some of my orchids that have never bloomed before, and I'd like to show you some of that. I have some reblooms on some of the orchids, and I'd like to show you that. <clears throat> if there are any plants that you see in my garden area that you are interested in seeing a propagation video on, please let me know. I've kind of gone away a little bit from my roots uh, on plant propagation, which is really what I do. So I'm, I'm happy to share, I'm happy to, to do a propagation video on whatever plant is of interest to you as long as I can have, as long as I have it or I can get it easily. So let me know. And I'm th I think I'm going to do some more uh, classical propagation videos again, because that's, that's my background. Okay. So what I want to do is uh, get behind the camera show you some of my plants and some of my um, other, some of my orchids in my collection. And we'll just take a quick look through all these things because I haven't done a, uh, just a tour in a while. My, my space here is really small, so it's not going to be that long. Uh, but just, we'll just take a quick loop through my backyard growing space and I'll, I'll, I'll share, share with you some of, the, uh, some of the interesting plants and some of the interesting things that are going on with those plants. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, let's get going. Let's start the tour. So the first thing that I wanna show you is the basil. Now, I just, I just love basil. I like putting, I actually put it on my sandwiches, cheese sandwiches. Um, one of the major essential components of my pizza is basil. So I like having it here. The plant looks good. You can propagate this from cuttings, uh, seed, uh, whatever you want. These are, these are great plants. I should also say I've got a lot of plants that are in pots because there are some real issues. Look at this tomato plant. And you can't tell, but this thing is uh, like, this is five feet tall right now and there's tomatoes swarming. Um, but I put a lot of the tomatoes and, and a lot of the other plants I have to put in pots here because there's a uh, root knot nematode. I had some tomato plants that I tried planting in the ground here in Southwest Florida and they just never did well. Um, and I pulled them up when, after they were close to dead and there were just uh, root knot nematodes all over it. I sent it to a tomato growing colleague of mine and he, he actually saved the pictures that I sent and uses them for, a cla for his class because it's such a great example of damage to tomato from a uh, root knot nematode. Anyway, so everything goes in pots. Uh, the tomato grows in pot and they do well. And because you've got such a big plant, and it is a big pot, but a relatively small pot. These, these plants, when they're this big, they've got to be watered every, uh, every day or two. 
Okay, so this is my this is my orchid pergola space, and there's a few plants I wanted to show you here. Um, so I've got a bloom spike coming out on this plant right here. Not sure if you could see it, but right in the center, there's a bloom spike coming out. And this bloomed for me a year ago, so uh, this is nice. As I go down here, I want to show you. This is one of my flats of um, seedlings. And again, because my I got no space for this in my normally normal nursery growing area, uh, so I got flats where I normally don't keep them. So this is just on another big pot, um, nothing going on here. Uh, but I I actually had a colleague volunteer to uh, babysit these guys, so uh, I'm going to hand a couple of flats off to this guy uh, I think next week and he's gonna try to raise the plants but the plants are looking they look pretty they look pretty good in here these again these are seedlings in two inch pots uh, they're growing really well I should also mention as far as seedlings in two inch pots what I've done is I've had to get a little creative so I put them and you can't see really in here very well so these are uh, the planters that you can use in aquatic gardens. So I've got, um, it, it's nice, There's, it's a four by four grid of the two inch pots fit really nicely. So I've got one there and I've got another one right there. And you can't, I'm sorry, you can't see in them, but I have some plants and I just hang these in my orchid pearl and, it, and they just really like the growing in there. I do also want to share with you, if I can find it here, is this is my, and it's, I can't tell if it's going to focus for me or not, but these are some new blooms that are coming out on my Cattleya pumula that is a little bit over, I might have to get another better angle on that, uh, which is a little bit over. <laughs> Three, three years, about three and a half years, not quite three and a half years from seed, but I'm really, uh, really happy because I've got a bloom, uh, bloom spike coming out on already, and I'm curious to see what it looks like. Uh, there's another bloom spike coming out on this Cattleya right here. So this is a Fred Clark hybrid, and it, it actually, I looked it up the other day, it's not named yet. So uh, I'm going to get a flower and, and see if he's got it got it named yet. Uh, this is right here. Another bloom spike coming out on Green Veil Dressy. And so this is a plant that I got a um, little, I guess not quite a year ago, and, and it was in bloom. And it's just, it's just doing really well. Normally I don't grow that many, I don't have that many mounted orchids, but there was such an extensive root system on this plant, I just had to keep it like it was. Um, another seedling, I gotta show you this. There's another orchid seedling right here, and that may or may not be a bloom spike coming out on that. That also is about three, three and a half, not quite three and a half years uh, from seed on that one. Moving on a little bit, here's, here's my guy. I gotta show you this. Um, this is Mishima Victory that is it's been in bloom for a while uh it's in such a huge pot um, one of the one of the viewers is interesting he referred to this as a forklift pot and that's about what it is this thing goes i don't know it goes 80 to 100 pounds because of what's you know the, the the pot's heavy and then what's in there's heavy but it seems to be doing well the old uh blooms that were on this plant they uh they um they finished, they dried up, uh, but it's got some, so much new growth coming out on it. It's just such a vigorous plant that it continues to, to bloom. Okay, let's move on a little bit now. So we're moving away from my, my orchids. This is another tomato plant, and I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make a, a tomato statement here. And that is, I don't like tomatoes. I like growing them. I do not like eating them, but see, then they're, they're cherry tomatoes. So you can see in there what these uh, cherry tomatoes look like. Okay, so moving on a little bit, there is a portulaca down there that I have propagated. And I have a video on propagation of portulaca. Mexican heather, um, I can propagate this if anyone's interested uh, in this. And then more, more basil. 
uh, right here. So um, I got other other plants kind of in the area, but what I want to do is we'll move over here a little bit. This is and I'll show you I'll show you this. So this is a um, a milkweed, and this is what the monarchs just completely defoliate, and they they love this plant. So there's a few leaves on it, um, but a couple of weeks ago there weren't because the monarch butterflies, uh, the larvae, were just, they were just going nuts on this plant. This is one of my uh, vanilla vines. This is not, um, this is not plantifolia. Uh, and what happened on this is it grew to this point, and then one of the palm fronds fell out of the palm that's mounted on and just knocked the tip off. So, uh, but, but even though the tip was knocked off, what we have, and I'm sorry, the sun is so bright, it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. And I think you can see, so there's, that's a bloom, uh, blooms that are just coming out of the, uh, this vanilla. So hopefully I'll get a chance to, to pollinate this. And it's low enough so that I can get it. A lot of people complain that with vanilla, it flowers the flowers are so high up on the plant because this thing will grow all the way up to the top of the tree easily. And so it's, it's, right, it's at the good level so that I can do uh, pollination of that plant. Um, here's some, and I just, I want to show you some of these things right here as far as propagation goes. So these are some plants that I'm propagating for the park. So there's a mixture of things that are in there. This is the, the state park that is a beachfront state park and Hurricane Ian just wiped out all of the vegetation there. So I'm doing a, you know, my small part in trying to get some of these natives back into the park. So this is, this is uh, a cutting of the only, and I'm allowed to do this, I have approval from the park management, um, but this is the only porterweed, a cutting from the only porterweed that I could find in the park after uh, hur the hurricane came through and the cleanup crews uh, came through. So this is porterweeds growing nicely. There is scorpion weed. There is dune sunflower that's in there. Uh, there is, in the back, you have some tropical sage. And that's my sunflower that I tried in the ground again. We'll see. I, I, just, I just don't think it's going to make it. Uh, there is spider lily right here. Uh, so I, these are some plants, again, that I took, I took cuttings from the park, and I'm, I'm propagating them for return to the park. I'm actually gonna, I set up a little nursery in the park area. I got approval to, to do this pretty recently. So I'm going to move these plants properly back to the park uh, today in the little nursery area and continue to propagate them so I can uh, put them out in the park. Again, this is, this is, it's a small thing that I can do, but it's, there, there's a lot, there's a lot that needs to be done. Okay, so again, some of my areas, some, uh, some more of my area. This is my nursery down here. So the, these plants, these seedlings do get um, morning sun, they're pretty intense, but you can see they're doing, they're doing okay right there. So they're doing, they're doing fine. Um, and they get morning sun, but then not too much, um, not too much afternoon sun, which is a little bit more intense. So more of my, this is my nursery stuff with all the white stakes here, but then these are the rest of my orchids uh, right here. So moving around here, oh, I do want to show you, there's a couple of things. So this is, um, this is a fowl that's just got a lot of, a lot of blooms coming out on this. Uh, and, and we'll see, I don't remember which one this is. Uh, and then back behind here, I've got more, there's more fowls that are in the background that are starting to bloom. Uh, there's fowls there. More of my nursery plants there and right there. And again, some some other plants and more fowls. Some fowls on the bottom. I should bring more of my nursery plants back here. Okay, moving to here, I got to show you another huge pot. Um, and this is. Again, one of my favorites that I'm trying in a big pot, and we'll see how this goes. It's got um, some of those sheaths. Actually, the one right there has a um, has a has a bloom. You feel in there, and it's got a bloom. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right. Um, one of the other things here is a 
Here's an encyclia, and I gotta show you this because this is a monster. Look at that. Look at that bulb right there. And in the middle, I don't know if we can see it well, but there's a bloom spike in the middle of that. So this is a uh, encyclia cordigera. But it's just it's just loving it, and it's growing really well, and it's a just an amazing bulb at the bottom. Okay. Uh, moving along a little bit, I do want to show you this right here. So this is a myrmecophila that a, a friend gifted to me, and wouldn't you know it? So I don't know if you can tell. So that bloom, it was my first bloom spike was coming out on it. Something ate it. Something ate the top off of this, and I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know whether I need to come out at night with a flashlight, look for snails or what's going on. But um, it was doing really well <laughs> until until something ate the top off of it. Okay, so, um, you know, Vanda's on on my trees doing, doing pretty well, just really extensive root system. And let's kind of move around and take a look. Um, these are, I should just tell you, these are some date palms that I grew from seed. The date palm in front of my house is, it, it's still there, but I took all the orchids off of it and it's going to be taken out for a road improvement project. So I have these two date palms in here, and they're getting pretty big. Again, you grew these from seed, but I'm having them uh, tested for uh, to see whether they're male or female. I don't want the dates. I, I don't want female plants that um, are going to make a mess in my front yard. So I'm having these tested, and you can do PCR tests on these in order to uh, confirm that they're male or female. So all I have is three plants. There's two in this pot and one in another pot, and I'm just having them tested. Uh, to, to, I, I want male plants, they'll produce the pollen, but they don't produce the dates, which make a real mess. So hopefully one of the three plants that I have is gonna be male. Um, periwinkles coming up all over the place. In, in my yard. So these um, are probably from this plant right here. Um, and then they just they just come up. These are just volunteers and I'll transplant them. There's tropical sage <laughs> mixed in there. But I'll transplant some of these guys because some of them look pretty good. I'll transplant some of these guys to other locations. Um, you know, again, periwinkle from seed, you can't tell exactly what they're, you know, the color and what they're gonna be because they are from seeds. So you get really a, a variation in color types. Most of them tend to be, most of these because of where they're from, are going to tend to be like that, that have kind of a, a, a dark pink outside and a white center. But I have other plants in here um, that are, you know, these, that's not a really good flower, uh, but that's a little darker color and again a little darker flower color there but you get really a range of things. So let's take a look at, I wanna show you a couple of things in here. And so let's first take a look at, if I can find it. So that seed capsule right there, I'm pretty excited about that. That is a monster capsule. This is a great plant. And uh, that is, that's big. And this is a, a plant that a, a colleague gave me. So I'm real happy that this seed capsule is growing so well. Um, that I will be probably returning some plants to him. And I don't know if we can see it. I'm going to move over here just a little bit. So this is some more flowers that are coming out. This is Oprah Winfrey. And so this is going to, uh, it's going to be blooming probably in about, uh, about another two weeks to, to a month. Okay, so moving on then just a little bit. This, I should mention, this is, um, this is one of my favorites. So this is Duranta. And this is a great, this is fragrant, a wonderful plant. It's got, I, I would describe this as a powdery fragrance. I'm really into fragrance gardening. Um, the bees also really like these, this plant and these uh, purplish, bluish flowers. It's not, I had a jasmine plant here previously and it just got way too big. Uh, the, the, the smell was wonderful, but it got too big. I had to trim it every, every month. And this thing is a little bit more uh, controlled growth. This is also really easy to propagate from cutting. So if you're interested in, in me doing a, a 
uh, video on Duranta propagation, I'm happy to do that. Okay, moving on through my orchids just a little bit more. I don't think there's anything to note here. There's some really nice new pseudobulbs that are growing out of this guy. Yikes, kind of hard to see, but those are two new pseudobulbs. That's a, just a really vigorous plant. And then moving on here, we, oh, we have this guy right here. So this is Mahina Yahiro Mishima. And this is just a really nice plant that has bloomed for me pretty consistently throughout the years. It was blooming a few months ago when I put out a new uh, pseudobulb and had these, has these beautiful flowers on a really fragrant, nice plant. Well, it's one of the plants that I've had in my collection for the longest amount of time. So it's just a, it's a really, um, just a really nice plant. I picked this up many years ago at Odom's Orchids in Fort Pierce. Okay, so moving on a little bit, let's see what we got. I don't know if there's anything else noteworthy. Oh, I do want to show you a couple things here. So this is another one of those, uh, those baskets, but we can take a look at it. And this is, um, I didn't, I, normally I put just the two inch pots in here, but I wanted to put this as a four inch pot in here and I should put more. So this is again, one of my seedlings and it's doing really well. And I moved it up right away to a four inch pot, just has a really extensive root system on it. And um, doing, doing well, putting on a new, you know, a new pseudobulb, new growth. Uh, this is, these are some of my seedlings that were a little small. These actually were from a flask <laughs> that fell out off the shelf and broke and I had to deflask a little early. So these plants are a little, little small. This is one of my new named variety. This is called Finley Funley. Uh, that that I that I hope will be uh, a nice big flower, uh, vigorous and and lots of fun. Um, and they're not they're not labeled, but they're all the same. Okay, moving along, I should show you this. This is this is an encyclia tampensis that I grew from seed, and this probably is going to bloom. I would think this is going to bloom this year because it's it's really growing pretty big and doing so well. All right, moving on a little bit. Um, Alamanda, I have an Alamanda um, propagation video. These flowers are great, again, really nicely. Um, well, I'd say nicely fragrant, but they're, they're, they have a little bit of a different fragrance. I like the smell, some people don't. These, are really, these were really sensitive to the cold weather, so when we had a little bit of a cooler temperature, these things just got, they got nailed. But it's coming back and it's looking pretty good. Okay, moving on then, I want to show you this guy. So this is a Maikai, and what I want to show you is one, uh, you're not going to be able to see it that well, two behind that leaf, and then three, four. So those have, and the two right here next to the newer flower, um, those are capsules that are just starting to form. So if this goes well, this will be put, this part, as part of the Maikai challenge where we're crossing onto Maikai, which is not, the Maikai is not, and this is the, the flowers a little bit, it's a little bit water soaked this morning, but it's, it's a, you know, it's a pretty flower, but it's small. And so what I tried doing was crossing some large flowers onto it. And we'll, but I've got four, four flower spikes here, or four, I'm sorry, four capsules on this plant and hopefully uh, we'll get stuff out of it. Okay, so moving on a little bit more here, another Vanda in the tree. Look at the root system on this, on this Vanda as we go up. I mean, this is a, this is a Selena. And so the root system on this is just, uh, you know, it's, got a lot of roots and they look pretty good. They're doing well. And that, those are all from this, this plant. This has not rebloomed for me, so I'm hoping soon that it will. All right, moving on a little bit. The last thing that I want to show you, I'm sorry, second to last thing. <laughs> this is, uh, this is a bromeliad that a neighbor gave me and they're, they're nice. They're, this is, these things are so easy to grow. He, you just shove them in the ground and they, they grow. The problem is 
those leaves is like saws and you get you it's hard to weed underneath it because you'll cut yourself so easily the blooms are really pretty and they make there's there's a, so many hybrids out there and so many new varieties that aren't quite as saw like on i mean i don't know if you can see the edge of those leaves but it, you know looks like a saw feels like a saw uh, but again, the flower's beautiful. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen with these. This is a big plant. And speaking of saws, I've got pineapples here too. And those are, those are pretty sharp as they're growing. But I'm excited, yay, that there is a pineapple flower down in this pineapple. So hopefully, and I, I had one off of another plant and they don't get as big as what you buy in the grocery store, but they're still, they're fun to grow. And, the, and actually the taste was just as good. So this is just starting to flower. I don't know how many months. This is a, this is a long time. You got to be patient for pineapples. Um, but it's just a fun thing to grow. So it's, it's something that I'm doing. Again, uh, that's a pineapple flower. It's just, it, it actually hasn't, doesn't have um, flowers on it yet, but there's, they'll come up through that structure right there. Okay, so that's all I have for today. I'm sorry, I went on a little long um, for my small uh, garden space, growing space. I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, if you want to see more videos, it would help me out if you can click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, again, hope you enjoyed my video, and happy propagating.